Deputy D students. In this video, we will be covering the third subtopic, which is partial fractions. What is our learning outcome for this video? At the end of the video, everybody must be able to construct partial fraction when the denominators are in the form of a linear factors. Let's see what are the types of fractions that we have. Type A is proper fraction and type B is improper fraction. In proper fraction, we have linear factor, repeated linear factor and quadratic factors that cannot be factorized. If we get improper fraction, we will start with long division. When we go through the operation of long division, the improper fraction will become proper fraction. Once it becomes proper fraction, we will identify whether it's a type 1, type 2 or type 3. So in partial fraction, we have types of fraction. First, we're going to look at what is a proper fraction. So these are example of proper fraction. A proper fraction is when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. In this example, 3 over 5x, the degree of numerator is x to the power of 0 and the degree of the denominator is 1. Notice that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Same goes to x square divided by x cubed plus 1. 2 is less than 3 and x 2 x square divided by x cube. So all the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. We call this proper fraction. So what is improper fraction? Improper fraction is the other way around when the degree of the numerator is greater or equal to the degree of the denominator. For example, 5 over 3, notice that the degree is the same. And for 2x to the power of 4 divided by x cubed, notice that 4 is greater than 3. 3x three cubed divided by 3x cubed, notice that the degree are equal. So we call improper fraction when the degree of the numerator is greater or equal to the degree of the denominator. So, when we want to do partial fraction, the first thing that we must recognize is whether we are given a proper fraction or improper fraction. Once we have recognized that we are given a proper fraction, we have to identify whether this fraction is type 1, which is linear factor, or type 2, repeated linear factor, or type 3, quadratic that cannot be factorized. In this video, we will be covering type 1 where the factors are linear. So if you look at the given example here, x plus 5 divide by x minus 4 multiply x plus 6. Notice that x minus 4 and x plus 6 are type 1, linear factors. So when we want to write partial fraction of linear factors, the numerators will be constant terms. Okay students, now let's try example 17. Express 2x minus 3 divide by x plus 1 multiply 3x plus 2 in partial fraction. So as I have explained to you earlier, the most important is for us to recognize whether this is proper or improper. So the degree of your numerator is 1. Whereas if you expand this, you will be getting a x square. So degree of your denominator is 2. Since 1 is less than 2, we call this a proper fraction. So once we have recognized that this is a proper fraction, we need to identify whether the given factor is type 1, type 2 or type 3. So type 1 is a linear factor, type 2 is a repeated linear factor and type 3 is a quadratic that cannot be factorized. So, if you look at the factors here at the denominator, these are linear factors. So, this is type 1, which are linear factors. Once you have recognized the factor as linear factor, we're going to write 
each partial fraction with one of the linear factor of its denominator. For example, 2x minus 3 divided by x plus 1 multiply 3x plus 2. We are going to write this as a over x plus 1 plus b over 3x plus 2. So, your a and b are constant term. Why are they constant term? Because you have recognized your factor as linear. If the factor is linear, then the numerator will be a constant term. Now, our aim here is to find the value of a and b. So, to find the value of a and b, we will choose to equate the denominator on your right hand side. So, this will become a multiply 3x plus 2 plus b multiply x plus 1 divide by x plus 1 multiply 3x plus 2. So, we choose to equate the denominator because if you look at the denominator on your left hand side, it's the same as the denominator on your right hand side. Since the de denominator is the same, we can say that the numerator is also equivalent, which means we can equate the numerator on your left hand side, which is 2x minus 3, with your numerator on your right hand side, which is a times 3x plus 2 plus b times x plus 1. So, we are doing this to find the value of a and b. So, the method that we are going to use to find the value of a and b would be substituting appropriate value of x. For example, we are going to use when x is negative 2 over 3. So, we choose this value because when we substitute negative 2 over 3, we will make sure that a becomes 0 and we will be getting the value of b. So, when x is negative 2 over 3, 2 times negative 2 over 3 minus 3 equals to a 3 times negative 2 over 3 plus 2 plus b multiply with negative 2 over 3 plus 1. So, we are going to substitute negative 2 over 3 on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So, for your left hand side, you will be getting negative 4 over 3 minus 3 equals to. So, over here, we will be getting 0 because we can cancel off the 3 and negative 2 plus 2 will be giving you a value of 0 plus b multiply negative 2 over 3 plus 1. We will be getting 1 over 3. So, when we find the value of b, we will be getting b equals to negative 13. So, we already get the value of b. Next, our aim is to find the value of a. To find the value of a, we will substitute when x is negative 1. This is because we know when we substitute negative 1, we will make sure that b becomes 0. Once we, b becomes 0, we will be able to find the value of a. So, we are going to substitute negative 1 on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So, on the left hand side, we will be getting negative 5 equals to a multiply negative 3 plus 2. We will be getting negative 1 plus 0. And we will be getting the value of a which is 5. So, we already find the value of a and b. Next, we are going to substitute the value of a and b into our partial fraction. So, 2x minus 3 divided by x plus 1 multiply 3x plus 2 equals to a. a is 5 over x plus 1 plus b. b is negative 13 over 3x plus 2. So, we are going to substitute the value of a and b. So, this is how we express 2x minus 3 divided by x plus 1 multiply 3x plus 2 as partial fraction. Okay, students. So, I hope you can follow example 17. At the end of the video, 
everybody must be able to construct partial fraction when the denominators are in the form of a linear factors.